It's time, boys. Trap Tendo. For those who don't know, Doom 3 is a multi-layered, multi-synthesis plugin that works on both Windows and Mac and is capable of doing many of things, and that is the reason why I like it. My other synthesizer, of course, that I like is Electra, and this right here is what kicked it off for me, especially Doom 2. Doom 2 was probably my love child for a long time. Now that it's back with Doom 3, I'm looking forward to all of the new features and all the different styles of things I can get into, and especially the new thousand presets that they have added by some of the best sound designers known to mankind. So without any further delay and my dog being on my neck, let's get into it. In this video, I'll talk about the new features, the presets, the improvements, and some of the things that I hope that they will change or add to the synth, but let's start with this demo track. Let's go. So a lot of people said that Doom 3 looks a lot like Doom 2, and I'm okay with that, because if it's not broke, don't fix it. And if I was to show you how Doom 2 looks like, here it looks like right now. This is what Doom 2 looks like. They're definitely not similar. One of the new features to the GUI is definitely this wood grain over here, which is okay, I mean, that's just for aesthetic reasons. The GUI itself has been crystal clear, and that's one of the main things that I liked about Doom 2 in the first place, so Doom 3 just doubles down on that. One of the new features that they have added is you can adjust the size of the GUI. So you can make it extremely huge if you have like a 4K screen. Damn, that is huge. Or you can make it small. This is how it looks like when it's small on a 1080p resolution screen. One of the main things that I hope they add back into this is the color scheme. I really miss my purple. I'm a huge fan of purple. You already know why. <laughs> So what I'll do right now is go and access the patch button, which will allow me to initialize the patch. So we have a sawtooth. And as you can see, it's a nice, clean, quality sawtooth. And this is where I wanna talk about the oscillator. So how this works is if you look over here at this module, this tells you that you're on all. So that means that if you do adjust anything in these parameters or these modules right now, it would affect all eight voices once you start accessing them. So what you would do basically to access a voice is you would go to one, to eight. So it doesn't matter which one you do, just go to a voice, but in order to hear that voice, you will go to the amount and apply that. So if you wanna use two voices, you will go one and two. So that you have eight voices or eight layers, as I like to call it, uh, you're able to do mo a multitude of things differently except for the apitiation. The apitiator function is the only thing that does not change per layer. And let's test that out right now. Note one, I'm gonna go ahead and put 11. And no, it does not. So, okay, so I'm right about that and I'm happy. The other thing that does not change per layer is the modulation matrix where you route your modulation. So you will pick your source out, which is your LFOs or whatever you want. And then you would go and apply that amount and then you would select your destination. And if you want to route it to a specific voice, you will choose that voice. Now there is some other synthesis in here, which I'm going to get into, which is the FM synthesis which it only has three operators where you can have serial, parallel. So those are the only two algorithms that you can pick, but it's a really simple and sweet FM synthesizer. But the big thing that everybody wants to see is this wavetable sim, which I played around with, where you could do a whole bunch of editing to this right here. You can either draw it in, 
Use lines. Use a node system, curves, or you can distribute your harmonics. You also can use your own custom wave tables. So if you have any other wave tables from any other synthesizers that you own, but if you're using a long sample, make sure that you import wave adjust wave tables. So that way that you get your snapshots. There are the traditional ones that come with Doom 3 so that you can use something preset and you can use it that way. You also can zoom in as well. I almost forgot to tell you that guys. So here you go as I zoom in and zoom out. And of course you have virtual analog where you have these waveforms, which is ramp up, ramp down, pulse and triangle. And then you can add more voices this way. If you want to change your unison voices, you can by doing nonlinear. To a song. And before I forget to mention per layer, you have three different oscillators. So you have oscillator two, where you have to turn this up. So don't forget. Let me add a voice in there. I'm gonna drop it down to negative 12. There we go. Change that a little bit and change it to swarm. And then you have your noise oscillator. If you want to use the noise oscillator, add that. So one of the new and dope features about this is the changes to the effects bus. Uh, of course, you can rearrange your effects the way you want them to be. The new EQ is a parametric EQ. So that way, if you're used to drawing your stuff out or if you're a fan of Fab Filters Pro EQ or Waves F6, then you'll definitely like this new EQ here because you can do stuff like this. <laughs> And let me go ahead and activate it. One of the features that I always liked about Dune is this right here, the reverb. So let me go over here to the reverb so you can hear it. Let me go back to the EQ and fatten that back up. Many of the presets in here are fantastic, especially ambient. You can sync it to the song. The glaring new feature that I like about this is the filters. Uh, the filters, of course, there are a crap ton of them. And man, is it some stuff that you get to pick from. And then this is where things go a little crazy because with these dual filters, you can choose to unlink them or link them together so you can control both of the parameters at the same time. So if I was to unlink these and then mess with the control, then link them again. Some fun can be had. Uh, also, you see this balance, so you can choose two different filters, and then that's where some things just get utterly disgusting. So I'm gonna go ahead and select two different filters, mess with the cutoff here. Mess with the mod matrix, and I'm going to select a source here, which is definitely gonna be a LFO. And then we're gonna go and select that amount. I'm gonna go to like 64. And then we're going to select the destination, which means I can go in here, go to the filter, select filter balance, and then go to my LFO, and then we get to see how the LFOs work. So the LFOs work just like how any other LFO will work in the synthesizer. You will have sine, triangle, ramp up, ramp down, pulse, sample and hold, and then two others, which I'm going to go to random pulse. <laughs> Now I'm going to sync and change the rate. There are other effects that you can select. Of course, the filter section is a little deeper than it seems. You can select vowel. And you also can route.
and now you can see some of the other things happen. Of course, you have an amplitude envelope, so if you really wanted your attack to be a little slower, so you have a pad-like sound, you can do that. And of course, if you want a more of a pluck sound, you would just turn down your sustain, and then you have your decay to mess with. One of the other things that I like about Dune as a whole, which was one of my favorite parts of Dune 2, is the envelopes. So you can draw the envelope graphic and you can draw stuff any way you want. So that way you can route things through it, maybe volume or... So if you don't like any of the preset LFOs, you can kind of make an LFO in here and have it behave as such. You can choose to invert or even reverse as you draw this out. And of course you can have curves. So if I was to choose the multi-segment envelope and since I'm using one here, I'm gonna go ahead and select that one. I'm gonna go ahead and readjust my amplitude envelope. Of course you can sync it so you can have it at audio rates or any type of rate that you want. And you can change the mode so where it loops. Of course, there's the Pigeator section. The Pigeator section is probably one of my most favorite things about this. Of course, you have your traditional one where whatever the root key is. So if you're pressing like C, so if you're pressing like C5 and you have it at zero and you have the Pigeator on, which you just select it right there, you can. And you also can select the octave so you can have it go up four octaves. Or you can adjust things by going to like two, three. But it does get a little deeper. You can add MIDI to it. And that's the main thing that I loved about Dune 2. And it is back in Dune 3. So how you would do that is select the mode as playback. Then you would select some MIDI. So you can load MIDI. So you can load your own custom MIDI as well. And I'm going to go ahead and load some custom MIDI. So let's hear the custom MIDI. You also could adjust the bars, of course. This would help if you just want that part right here. And you just could do a whole crap ton of things with Doom 3. I think you get the freaking picture by now. One of the things I'm kind of sad about is definitely the fact that you can't use both ARPs. Like I was sitting there hoping that you could use ARP 1 for one part and then ARP 2. But, you know, I guess you could use ARP 2 on other voices and ARP 1 on any other voice that you want because it is solely dedicated to that. So if I press ARP 1 on voice 1 and then if I want to do ARP 2 on voice 2, you can do that, but you're not going to be able to do it per layer. So hopefully, I guess in the future, please, Bass Synopsis Audio, could we get that? If not, I won't be mad at you. I did forget to mention that this is NKS compatible. So if you have a machine Mark III, Mark II, or whatever by Native Instruments, you're able to use it within that ecosystem. So that is pretty damn good. So if you do have Doom 2 presets, they do work in this as well. And they are included, but you can move them into the folder if you want. I have not moved mine into the folder, but Doom 3 has their own factory presets. Matter of fact, let's hear them because they have been designed by Kevin Schroeder and many other great sound designers. And that was just one button I pressed.
quite impressive previews, don't you think? So let me know how you feel in the comment section about Doom 3, because I really love Doom 2, and Doom 3 just doubles up on the things that I really love, especially with the new addition of the Wavetable Editor, and many more Wavetables, and some of the other things like the dual filter section with more filters added to it. It really sounds good. Now there are some things that I really do miss. I really miss my purple skin. Obviously, purple is my favorite color. Let me know how you feel. But for right now, I'm gonna give it the DJ Admin pre-stamp of approval, no cap.